Thank you, Newton, for sponsoring today's video. Cheers, John. Cheers, man. To a vacation, well deserved. Nice. Yo, that sound is strong, eh? Yeah, you got any sunscreen? I really hope I work. Cafe con leche? No, no, muchas gracias, hermano. Muchas oh, gracias. Oh, mu mucho, mucho gracido, bro. <laughs> gracias, mucho gracias. Gracio. Yo! Dude, really? Cut! Are you man, serious? I can't keep working for free for you guys, man. I'm Dude, out of here. We lost another one. Bon, continue to film it, Louis. Alright, take two. This skit was semi accurate because we are actually going on vacation this month. I feel like it very much influenced our decision when we built this setup. It's cozy, nice to be in, and has all the essentials needed to make an office space more enjoyable. We repainted the whole wall and instead of having the usual bare grey ash paint, we went with a two-tone combo, little black dress and platinum white both by Bear. It's not my personal setup nor my personal space, in fact this is where Jan spends most of his time working and uh, I thought it would be awesome to give you guys a tour of what we built for him and how it makes a workspace truly stand out. The first thing we decided to build was a space he could come to in the morning. This here is an IKEA shelf unit, super practical with tons of space and storage compartments. We use it to store miscellaneous items for the office and a watering pot because we finally got some real plants. Other than watering them in the morning, we also like to put small little reminders on the board for simple day-to-day -day errands. The shelf unit also allows us to overall decorate it nicely, add a bit of lighting with a Hugo, and store our espresso cups to keep them handy. The cutting board, by the way, we got from IKEA. Everything else that makes part of the bottom set was bought at HomeSense. On the IKEA board, Jan usually keeps these jars we also got from IKEA with different types of coffee grains in them. He also got a little knockbox to throw away the used coffee beans. I actually had to get a little trash can from IKEA as well. We have a hectare wall light on top shining a bit of light on these, enough light to help him measure his coffee grains with this digital scale he got from Amazon. The coffee, he makes it on this Breville Barista Express machine. It's super expensive, by the way, I've never understood his obsession with this machine, but apparently it grinds and makes coffee super well. We also installed some shelves on top, I actually put a clock there for him, the current books he's reading, a candle to spread a nice scent and these incense cones. I think the overall aesthetic of it is super pleasing and the black shelves gives it a bit of character. Thank you Becky and Chris for inspiring this space, the only thing I thought was lacking was a neon light but that's personal preference. Towards the right of this we have a fake plant bought locally and because this overall corner tends to get super dark we had the amazing idea of copying Edward Lee and installing this softbox on top. The arm holding it is from newer, it's actually wall mounted, it does protrude outwards which is cool but because our ceilings are low and the arm is short it makes it impossible to use it as an overhead. This had to be installed low enough for us to fit this whole setup within this corner. The light source is from Aperture, I must say the Amran 200X paired with the SE softbox really makes the perfect combo to light a setup. Jan really likes it and he finds it plenty of lighting for him. Although the other major reason as to why I got it is because aperture lights are controllable through their app so you won't be seeing me on a ladder trying to change the settings on its panel. Thankfully I'm tall enough to be able to reach for things on this shelf. This here is a simple white wall lac shelf bought at IKEA. Super easy to install so you really don't have to worry about it. I do like to pair it up with a Godox TLC. 60 light bar to make items pop and I also cheated a bit by adding these battery powered light strips from IKEA. They don't last that long by the way if you're wondering so it's not my top recommendation but it does make things look good. I still do wish they were able to yield a bit more light however it's not the end of the world. Also if you are looking to decorate a shelf the best thing to do is to stick to sets of three with items of different colors and textures. A plant also does the trick to add a bit of color and I would say some items don't look bad by themselves. Books are a cheat code, maybe not as good of a cheat code as Newton. You see, I've been trying to get a bit into investments and ever since I coded an NFT, I've been slowly buying some Ethereum and letting it sit. 
Newton is a low cost, zero commission crypto trading platform that allows you to do so. It's honestly super easy to use because I can just e-transfer myself some money directly from my bank and receive my funds the same day. They have zero funding and withdrawal fees and they'll even cover the first $5 in network fees when withdrawing crypto. You can not only buy Ethereum, but also Bitcoin, Solana, Cardano, and many more. Like over 70 cryptocurrencies, their UI makes it fantastic to navigate their platform to ensure you never get lost. They make it seamless to connect your bank account to it, retrieve statements and reports when it comes to doing your taxes, and you have the option of placing a limit order or a market order. If you decide to sign up, take a look at the link down below. You can sign up on a computer or on their mobile app, and if you do use the link and trade over $100, we'll both get $25. But look, below the shelf, we have an Ergon Office desk pretty much responsible for packing up all of this tech. It is a small desk, 60 inches by 30 inches to be precise. I do wish we had their 72 inches model instead. We find ourselves running out of room quite quickly, but things work fine for Jan. Other than that, to be honest, this is my favorite desk so far and I love the wood it comes with. It's real wood made 100% in Canada and looks super nice. It can scratch easily if you don't take care of it, but this year was us being dumb. I really wanted to get their desk filing cabinet, but Jan wanted to keep their add-on desk drawer instead. Fair enough, it gives him enough room to store his vacuum cleaner and an air duster. The cable management solution was non-debatable for me though. I like how well the grids help you route cables and how easy it is to connect them to the power strip it came with. Plus, the net that rests on the bottom surface of the table makes it easy to store cables in there. All of this allows you to keep the desk as a single working unit to be able to raise it up or down. It can carry up to 300 pounds and it can go all the way from 22.7 inches to 48.7 inches. The only thing is that for us to be able to do that, we need to offset it from the wall. But that's no problem because moving these legs around is pretty easy. They are huge and long. Our monitor setup was incredibly inspired by our minimal gaming setup. This is honestly one of the best monitor configurations you can have. Jan and I enjoy it for different reasons, but personally, for gaming and software development, I think it's perfect. On the other hand, Jan likes it because he benefits from a vertical workflow a lot more. These are both different monitors, mainly because I'm still waiting for LG's dual up monitor to arrive. If you want a review of that, let me know with a hashtag LG and I'll make sure to make one. Essentially though, on the left, we have an LG Ultrafine 32 UN 88 b 4k display and on the right the old benq pd 3200u 4k display benq's panel is absolutely gorgeous i actually prefer this one over the lg panel because of how sharp it is but he seems to think the colors on the lg are way more accurate regardless of that i must say they both have great io although instead of USB-C for the price i would have loved to have thunderbolt not a big deal these monitors are still extremely amazing thin bezels, medium-sized bodies, and even though their back panels are plastic, they are well-built. These still allow me to install a BenQ light bar on top to glow some more light on the desk itself. They both sit on separate Vivo pneumatic stands. Vivo and mounted are my top recommendations when it comes to stands because of how sturdy they are and how easy it is to route the cables. Separate stands make it easier to move things around, but in my opinion, it can make a setup look ugly. Part of the reason as to why we kept the Groovemin monitor stand here. These are powered by my personal favorite mini ITX build. I finally was able to get my hands on a second GPU for our gaming setup and so I decided to bring our RTX 3080 in here to pair it up with a Ryzen 5900X and some Lexar 32GB RAM sticks. It's a little beast of a computer and runs as well as our Mac Studio. To be fully clear, this build has a CX650F power supply from Corsair, 1TB of M.2 storage from them as well, their H100X CPU liquid cooler, no fans, but all of it connects to a B. 550i stretch motherboard. Of course, all inside of this meshlicious case, it was tough to get everything in here, mostly when it came to the power supply. So if you want to get a case like this, make sure to get the right dimensions for the power supply. Other than that, believe it or not, we use it as our editing machine. Plus, there are enough ports in the back for all of our audio equipment and peripherals. Our audio setup is pretty simple. Rode manufactures some of the best audio equipment in the world, and so I decided to spend the money to 
to upgrade a few things. This audio setup is mainly perfect for podcasts, but we mainly decided to use it for gaming. I paired their PSA1 boom arm with a RodePod mic and a black XLR cable for a minimal look. I of course needed an audio interface to go with it and so I got the Rode AI1 hooked to it. I've heard wonders about this thing and since we were running out of room, we wanted something small and minimalist. It has a gain dial with a phantom power feature integrated, signal light for audio level, monitor volume control with a zero latency monitoring feature and a light to let us know if it's connected to power. Super intuitive to use, plugs with one single cable to the computer and allows for us to hook our headphones to it. Proper headphones for us are a must, we are trying to accomplish better audio for the videos and so I bought the DT900 Pro X from Bayer Dynamic. Incredibly high rated headphones by audiophiles, they sound absolutely amazing, they are super comfortable and look nice. Plus they are not heavy so our Lamical headphone stand can handle them. On the back of our audio interface, we connected our set of speakers. Audio Engine sent these HD4 speakers a long time ago and I'll probably never get rid of them. They are well crafted and sound wonderful and even better ones properly broken in. They are top notch speakers and well matched between the woofers and tweeters. I did pair them up with Canto speaker stands so I could aim them to inwards towards our ears. I do confess it makes a huge difference in sound unlike the way I personally place my desk speakers. As for peripherals, Jan recently got this crazy keyboard. I'm personally not a fan of it and I think it's because I haven't spent much time with it but boy does he love this thing. It is an ortholinear keyboard so technically it's designed to minimize the amount of finger movement between keys. The clever thing about it are these knobs that were integrated on its chassis. Jan mapped them with Nvia to make his life super simple and so he uses some of the knobs for undo redo, scrolling the timeline, cutting footage, saving a file, it's just mainly programmed with Premiere. Although if you are interested, know that you can program it with any software as you wish. Overall, personally, I find it cool how easy it is to copy and paste with this. Oh, and before you ask me, this braided cable was bought on Amazon. I have two of them and we really like them. Now, it's not the best of keyboards to color grade with. We recently got a Toolbox Neo and this just helps him color grade our videos and Lightroom photos. You can assign single click actions, double click actions and combinations of buttons to it. It's actually pretty cool. We are still trying things out, but it looks really promising. For our mouse of choice, we have the Logitech G Pro X and this thing is a beast. It's literally a 60 gram weapon and we love it when it comes to first person shooters. We both love the MX Master but currently with all these gimmicks we have on the table, we don't need the customizations the MX Master provides. All of this does sit on this Harbor London soft microfiber lining mat paired with a Groovemade mouse mat. By the way, after years of owning this, I'm starting to find that the leather is shrinking. With time, it sort of starts to deform, just a heads up. From them, we also got a tray that we more and more find ourselves using because Kingston sent a bunch of memory equipment recently. Now, the thing about Kingston that I love the most is their workflow station. I talked about it in our latest desk accessories video, but in short, this thing is a complete beast. They sell separate modules to make your whole dock modular and what I love about it the most is how fast the read and write speeds are for my SD cards. It's probably because it's connected via USB-C and independently powered. Hue and Gantry are responsible for lighting some of the setup. This corner needs a bit of warmth to it so I had no choice but to put our floor palm light here. This has a Hue bulb that's paired with our grading strips and our Hue play bars behind our monitors. If you haven't seen our latest video, I recommend you watch it but this forms part of our automation within the office. They are just so simple to control with the app and integrate super well with Google Home. I will confess that after spending so much time with this DX Racer chair, I finally know what's good and not so good about it. John and I seem to have the same complaints and so the lower lumbar support for us is like non-existent, our lower back hurts after an extensive period of time sitting on it. However, I will say that the rest is pretty comfortable and I find it to be better than our autonomous ergo chair. It is huge if you compare it to my Herman Miller chair but functionality wise, they are very similar. I do love the fact that it's a mesh chair because because you can properly breathe and you don't get as hot so I really recommend getting something like this if you suffer from that. I do want to make a full review although I'm not sure how many of you are interested. TikTok seems to be so maybe you guys will be too. 
regardless i hope you guys like the way we style this setup it very much suits us and fits jan with his current workflow looks extremely nice and i find it really cozy being there hopefully this gives you guys a few ideas of what you can do i will be making a top 10 premium desk accessories video next week so we can talk about some of these items more in depth and show you a few others that i'm excited to get stay tuned guys we'll see you all soon take care